Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's party time. It's time for a Poopsie the Killer 3 breakfast at Slenderman's. That's right, Poopsie666 is back with another fabulous story. That's right, we are in for the third one. We are in for the return of the Jedi. We are in for the return of the King. We are in for, uh... Friday the 13th, part 3, you know, the best one. <laughs> Here goes! It's time for Friday, no, Poopsie the Killer 3, breakfast at Slenderman's. I'm so hyped for this. I would like to thank uh, my boy Baptism on Fire for suggesting this or bringing this to my attention on Twitter. Go check out his channel, he's awesome. I'd also like to thank, of course, Poopsie666 for writing this. Here goes nothing, here we go! Ah! It was morning. The trees stood tall as the wind gently blew. In the deep woods stood a large mans manson mansion surrounded by trees so the government couldn't find it. <laughs> yes, the government can't find it. As the wind blew in the deepest, darkest depths of the woods, you could almost make out the sound of a voice howling through the breeze. It sounded like the faint sound of a low, ominous voice saying, Poopsie. Poopsie the Killer 3. Breakfast at Slenderman's. It had been a whole week since Poopsie had been invited to the Slender Mansion and her and all the boys were having breakfast. Poopsie was happily eating her chicken nugget tacos. Ew! A grey boy called Eyeless Jack was eating a kidney and a blonde boy who looked like Link but was called Ben was eating cereal. I'm getting Vietnam flashbacks to voice box already. The other side of the table, there was a shy brunette in a mask called Masky, uh, was eating a large helping of cheesecake whilst blushing. He sat next to Toby, who was eating lots of waffles and was really random. Slenderman sat at the head of the table, peacefully enjoying the morning atmosphere. Suddenly, their dining was interrupted by the sounds of a large roaring engine. It sounded like someone was driving in circles outside the mansion. That damn boy. Slenderman stood up walking over to the front door. He opened it and saw Jeff ominously riding his mo motorcycle in circles. How do you ominously ride a motorcycle? Poopsie push pushed? Poopsie pushed her face against the window, drooling with her mouth open as she gazed at his bike. Glad you could finally make it, Jeffrey. Slenderman said, putting his hands on his hips. Oh, I bet you are, said Jeff as he jumped off the bike and strutted inside, tossing his jacket on the coat rack. Morning, boys, he said to the other boys before turning to Poopsie. Morning, Poops, <laughs> he smirked. Hello, little boy, she smiled back. We meet again. Ain't nothing little about it, muttered Jeff as he filled up his mug with coffee. So, how's my princess, smiled Jeff taking a sip. Poopsie put her hands on her hips and leaned her body slightly to the right in a cool pose. I'm no one's princess. I'm a feminist. <laughs> Slenderman sat back down, looking across at the rest of the table. I for one think it's nice to finally have us all together for breakfast for once, he said. No lost loved ones, no grand finales, and no battles to the death. Just a genuinely nice slice of life. He smiled, but he didn't have a face, but it was just sort of implied. Uh, and, and with our newest family member, P -P Poopsie here, with us things have never been b better, said Toby as he ate another, wa another waffles. The waffles were well, well cooked with a golden brown syrup on top of them. The syrup glistered in the light of the room. Don't be silly, Toby, said Poopsie. I am nobody. I am a shadow. A forgotten memory, if you will, she said poetic, looking out the window. Everyone at the table gasped and all said at once, Poopsie, you are the sweetest girl we ever know. Just You just have a really big heart and love too much. And sometimes that gets you in tr into trouble, but it is only because you have such a good heart and special mind. You are purer. Yes, they all said that at the same time. <laughs> Thanks, boys, said Poopsie as she sat back in her chair. I just wish I could see what you see in me. She got up and walked off into the other room alone with thoughts. Poor Poopsie, said Maskey. It seems she analyzes situations well, but now because of her character development, she is overanalyzing situations. Jeff smacked his lips up and down. 
Good coffee, he said. Real good coffee. He tossed some change on the table and headed outside for his bike. Why, why, why is he, like, fucking handing out change? He's living there, is he? Isn't he? Or maybe he's not, I don't know. <laughs> Just where do you think you are going? Said Slenderman angrily. You've been riding around brooding on that bike for days, and now that you've come back home, you're just leaving us again? Yes, said Jeff. That is what I am doing. I know, that's why I said it, said Slenderman as he picked up Jeff's jacket from the coat rack. Can't ride your bike without your jacket, he teased. Jeff angrily jumped up and down. Give me my jacket! No, said Slenderman, causing Jeff to come back inside and angrily punch a wall. P Poospy was in the other room but heard of all of this and rolled her eyes and said, Oh, boys. She walked into the room and said, Jeff, you need to stay. Slenderman was worried sick about you out there. Okay, said Jeff. I understand. I also understand, said Slenderman. It seems that we really needed to just be honest with each other. Thank you for helping us, Poopsie, they both said. That's what I do, said Poopsie. I help, but I cannot help myself. <laughs> Tears came down from her eyes as she twirled around to hide her teary face. Now, if you wouldn't mind, I think I'd like to finish my tacos. <laughs> Poopsie, Slenderman said. Those tacos have gotten very cold now. It's okay, said Poopsie. Anything that brings me joy in life is just a distraction anyway. Suddenly, a big clown came downstairs. It was Laughing Jack, and he lived in the mansion too, and he said... Uh, well, how am I gonna do uh, Laughing Jack's voice? I don't know. Poopsie, you have to go and face your problems, or they will come and face you. He then went back upstairs. Nice. <laughs> so he just comes down for a cameo and then comes up. S sir cried the timid masked boy with the com compensating sideburns. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> There's a threat in the woods. I believe it may be the minions of he who waits behind the wall. I like minions, said Toby. As do I, said Slenderman. But this is really serious. What on earth would he who awaits behind the wall want? Eyeless Jack and Ben both looked at each other. Is it... is it really him? Is it really he who awaits behind the wall? They both said in shock. If Salgo shows his dirty face around here, I'll wreck him. Said Jeff as he stabbed a knife into the table to show how serious he was. Poopsie slapped Jeff in his lavish face. Do not speak of... He who awaits behind the walls' name around here, she snapped. Slenderman looked at her, shocked by her ominous energy. Okay, Poopsie, look, I appreciate the enthusiasm, but you can settle down a little. You don't understand, she said in an ominous and mysterious way. I don't like to talk about it, she whimpered, but not in a cowardly way, in a brave but deep and troubled way. As three tears came down from each of her eyes, glistening in the moonlight, everyone looked at her troubled soul and felt really sorry. It's okay, Poopsie, said Slenderman, wiping her tears away. I know what happened on Christmas Eve when you were just a kid. Jeff flipped his hair out of his eyes before standing up. Oh, I'm not just gonna sit around like this. He grunted as he put on his jacket and went to get his motorbike. Sit down, boy, said Slenderman. We need a plan of action here, something your overabundance of testosterone couldn't comprehend. Jeff looked Slenderman straight in the face as he pointed at him and muttered, Your non-fulfillment is your own idiosyncratic deficiency, <laughs> old man. Slenderman could only stare at him in silence as Jeff left the mansion by himself. Don't listen to him, boss, said Maskey as he ate a slice of cheesecake. That boy is nothing but trouble. I'm sorry, I just need a moment alone to process this, said Slenderman. Okay, everyone give, give the big guy some space, said Maskey as he cleared the room. This was clearly serious business. 
Jeff was roaring as he rode fast on his motorbike. He was full of ominous rage and could not be contained. Suddenly he heard a popping noise and the bike stopped and he flew off it and hit into a tree. Gasping he looked behind him and saw an elaborate trap was set out and someone had put some nails in the woods to burst his tires. Jeff was in one piece but he had sprained his ankle really bad and couldn't get up. He frantically looked around, reaching for his knife in his pocket, but he couldn't find it. All he could find was a scrunched up piece of paper. He opened it slowly and it was revealed to be an old photograph of him and Slenderman together, with the word family printed on the bottom. Aww. He shed a tear. How could I be so blind? I left the one person who was there for me. His lament was brought to a halt by laughter. The laughter of a mean girl. Meanwhile, Slenderman was still taking some time to calm down from the mean things said to him. Poopsie was with Maskey and Ben and Eyeless Jack and Toby, trying to work out a plan to stop the threat in the woods. We have to stay organized, said Maskey as he got out charts and paperwork. I don't read numbers, hissed Eyeless Jack as he angrily poked Maskey. Toby picked up a hatchet and said, I could use a hatchet. Poopsie looked at them. All of them were trying, but none of them knew how to analyze the situation well. She used her special mind to find a solution. We need to stop them, said Poopsie. Wow, that is great deduction, Poopsie. I'm very proud of you. The room was silent as they looked at her before looking back at themselves. My god, she's got it, they all said. Slenderman heard and came into the room. See, Poopsie, this is why we have you here. Just doing what I do, said Poopsie modestly. Someone has got to go and stop them, said Slenderman. And I think I know who is best suited for this mission, he beckoned towards Poopsie. Me? said Poopsie. You really think I'm ready for my own mission? <laughs> yes, Poopsie, he said, putting his hand on her shoulder. I'm a feminist. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm loving this so much, this is amazing. Jeff was screaming frantically, waving his arms up and down, trying to get up, but it wasn't working. The laughter grew louder and louder as she got closer to him. Jeff huffed and puffed, but nothing was working. He had sprained his ankle really bad and it hurt. Well, 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 she said as she approached. Jeff could now make out her face. Jane? He said shocked. What do you want from me? Jane got closer and out of the shadows came her fellow comrades. The Drake, Bob, and Dennis! Oh my- No, what? 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 <laughs> Yo! Yo! <laughs> is that the Dennis? I, I think it is? <laughs> I mean, if it's only like a- like some obscure creepypasta killer that I don't know of, then fine, but if that's actually me, then oh my god. No, no, I think that's actually me, because, because like, Baptism of Fire did say he was gonna write me in, into a cameo in the third one, so, hey, man, <laughs> I'm in this story, guys. I'm Creepypasta Cannon now. As Saul goes minions, it's our duty to warn the world of his coming first, Jane smiled. And what better way to make a warning statement than to kill his oldest companion? She pulled out a knife and placed it close to Jeff's throat. She was about to cut him open when she paused, noticing an unfamiliar shadow in the woods. Identify yourself! She yelled like a bitch. <laughs> oh, I don't believe we've met before, said the shadowy figure. How about a little icebreaker? The shadow jumped out, revealing herself to be Poopsie. Oh shit, <laughs> that was not the right Poopsie voice, sorry. As she swung a slab of ice down onto Jane's head, knocking her straight to the floor. Jane held her head in pain before she before getting back up. Not one for introductions, are we? said Poopsie. How would you like it if I gave you the cold shoulder? Poopsie grabbed a shard of ice and jabbed it into Jane's shoulder, causing her to wince in pain. Suddenly, Poopsie's witty remarks were brought to a halt as she slipped on the ice, grabbing a hold of Jane as the two fell over together. Everything felt like slow motion. Poopsie gazed into Jane's 
plump black lips. They almost beckoned out to her. Oh god. For a split second, Poopsie could feel like her problems had disappeared. She felt like everything was going to be okay as she stared into James's beautiful ample lips. Oh my god. The two hit the ground and Poopsie immediately snapped back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Oh. Sorry, uh, I, I didn't want to rub you the wrong way, she said as she grabbed Jane's hands and started rubbing them into the blade of her knife, causing Jane to cry in pain as she stumbled back up to her feet. Jane looked at her hands to see that the skin had been entirely cut off, revealing her red bloody flesh. Ooh, I guess this, uh, this ship has already sailed, huh? Looks like someone's been caught red-handed, said Poopsie as she pushed Jane over and grabbed a large rock off the ground. Jane submissively looked up at Poopsie. Poopsie was about to throw the rock onto Jane's face before she stopped herself. Poopsie had seen her own reflection in a nearby puddle. She saw how she looked holding a rock. She was about to throw onto someone's face. She had become the one thing she set out to destroy. Poopsie tossed the rock down, away from Jane, and picked her back up. G go she said reluctantly. Thank you, said Jane, as she and the rest of Zalgo's goons ran off into the woods. Jeff got back up and limped over to Poopsie. We did it, he said. Oh my god. I don't know why, I don't know why, I mean... I, I'm honestly, like, I'm honestly getting, like... <laughs> Invested into these characters like it, it's ridiculous and it's so hilarious uh, and I mean I mean I'm, I'm like fully convinced that it's supposed to be you know Hilarious and a satire and you know funny uh, But I'm honestly getting invested in these characters like I'm loving this. I'm loving this. This is great Slenderman was pacing back and forth inside the mansion I'm so worried for her, but at the same time I know I shouldn't because I believe she is a strong independent girl He said to himself I hope she's okay, but not because I think she's less competent than any of us, I just want to be a father figure to her, but not in a creepy way, because I genuinely care about her. <laughs> Maskey approached him. If it really is he who awaits behind the wall, then I fear we are in grave danger, he said. Okay, but that doesn't really help my anxiety right now, snapped Slenderman, before he noticed two figures through the window approaching the mansion. Jeff and Poopsie arrived at the front of the mansion. Jeff's face was full of sorrow as he struggled to push the remainder of his beloved bike. Poopsie carried the bike's now detached saddle. She stared deeply at the soft black leather. It almost looked like a pair of plump black lips. Ooh. She was uh, distracted by Slenderman's calling out to them. You did it, he happily called. I knew you would and didn't doubt you, but I am still pleased you did it. Just then a swirl of smoke came out from the trees, causing them all to run inside and slam the door shut. What was that? said Slenderman. Poopy sighed. If he who awaits behind the wall sent out his minions, that was just warning and it means he is also coming too. What would he want from us? Slenderman said. He's never disturbed us like this before. What has our humble little mansion added recently that he could possibly want? Poopsie sighed again. Her special mind analyzed the situation and she knew exactly what he wanted. She looked back at the room she stood in, surrounded by the faces of boys huddled together in fear. She opened the door and stepped outside, closing it behind her. The smoke spiraled around, forming a large demonic figure. Slenderman looked out the window in fear. Zolgo, he muttered. Zolgo looked down at the young girl who approached him. The howling of the wind began to develop into the demon's voice. Hello, Poopsie, he spoke. Poopsie raised her head and looked him dead in the eye. Hello, father. And that was Poopsie 3. Holy mother of god. That was honestly... I enjoyed that a whole lot. I mean, I loved that. Uh, might just be my favorite entry into the Poopsie saga yet. Not like, seriously, I, I love that. I love that. That was amazing! I, I really like the characters. It's, it's hilarious. Very funny. Great satire of, like, horrible creepypastas. But at the same time, like, I'm... I'm honestly getting, like, invested into these characters. Like, I like Poopsie. Poopsie is, like, wonderfully, uh, 
you know, <laughs> wonderfully oblivious to everything. Uh, not oblivious, but you know what I mean. So she's got that special mind, and she's like super perfect and everything like that. Everyone loves her, and I honestly, <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe because I'm very easily, I I, I could live myself into this story very easily, but I I seriously started shipping uh, Poopsie and Jane. I don't know why. It was like they only met for like a few minutes, but but still, I mean, I liked it. I mean, I'm I. I enjoyed it. I, I I'm very excited to see where the story goes from here because apparently Zalgo is 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 Poopsie's uh, father. That's awesome. That's a fantastic twist. I can't wait to uh, to uh, read the uh, continuation. Uh, I really liked it. I got some serious flashbacks to uh, to Voice Box, uh, the story, but this is nowhere near on the same awful level as uh, Voice Box. Uh, I mean, Voice Box had its uh, had a certain charm to it as well, but I, I'm, I mean, I'm loving this one. I'm loving uh, Poopsie, so I can't wait for Poopsie the Killer Four. Um, that you, you have to call it the Poop Fourie, okay? <laughs> like, like there's no there's no other other uh, possibility. You need to call it Poop Fourie or something like that. I don't know, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, final thoughts: Poopsie the Killer Three. Amazing! It was awesome. I loved it. Um, fantastic job. Definitely lived up to the uh, the, the previous two chapters, uh, and I can't wait to uh, see what happens next. Fantastic work! Thanks to Poopsy Six 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 for writing it. Thanks to uh, the one hideous goat child, uh, <laughs> uh, Baptism on Fire. Thanks a lot for uh, suggesting it. It's awesome, and uh, I think you actually uh, co-wrote this story with Poopsie. Uh, so fantastic job! It was fantastic, amazing. Loved it. Take care, everyone. Stay awesome. Goodbye.